the wolf and the blade. It's an old story about how um, natives would put a, a blade into the ice and the wolf would come and he would lick the blade, right? They would put blood on the blade and he would lick the blade. He would cut his tongue and continue to lick the blade until he bled to death. Mm. But he thought he was eating something, but he was licking the blood. Mm. Do you blame the wolf for trying to eat? Or do you blame the person that put the knife in the ice? We didn't bring the Florida, we're only going to go salmon fishing, but we've got another reel with some fine line on. So we chucked a Tassie Devil on and we're going to see if we can catch a trout in the side creek. Doesn't seem to be any salmon in the main river, if there is we can't bloody catch them. Uh, we spied my one out brothers there. and my sisters are stranded on this road. A hot and dusty road that a I thought for sure we were going to catch a salmon or a trout this trip. Same actually. Back to the drawing board. And I ain't got no home in this world anymore. It's massive. Well done, Kristen. Shout out to Stu Dreaver. Farming on the shares and always I was poor. My crops I led to the bank to store. My wife took down and died up on the cabin floor. And I ain't got no home in this world. Anymore. Oh, it's blowing its guts out. We come down here to put the net out. We were going to paddleboard the flounder net out, but it's so windy. I don't think the paddleboard will even get out there without the kids blowing away. around it's mighty plain to see this world is such a great and a funny place to be all the gambling man is rich and the working man is poor and i ain't got no home in this world Oh no. Do you think we can fix her? Dunno. Thousand dollars and one dislocated hip later. And the next day. Siggy's still alive. Moral of the story. Don't know if there is a moral to the story. I know bullets are only five bucks for the 7mm rim mag, but I actually thought she was buggered. She was carrying on and yapping. I thought she had a broken back or a broken pelvis, but turns out it was just a dislocated hip. Anyway, got to go to Christchurch now to get the brakes machined on this beast here because they were warped. Discs were warped. 
there's a few other things too, the injectors are making a hell of a rattle, it's pretty gutless, I'm going to get it chipped but not today. First things first, and also I need to fix all the uh, rubbers on the inside of the canopy, they're all buggered so not quite sure how I'm going to do that, maybe with some kind of glue. Oh, and take the inflatable raft in to get fixed because that's got three massive holes torn in it. To Christchurch. Man, Christchurch is looking sharp. Every time I come over here and cruise to a different part of the city, I get surprised by something new. Don't know what the go of these penguins are. Anyone, anyone tell me? Duck. Check this out, it's just a pizza oven in the middle of the city. You probably just come down here and cook your fellas a pizza. Oh, where we are, Victoria Square, just down the road from the casino. I'm intrigued. What happened, bro? Boards just got thrown in the water, eh? The board just got bit too jucked it in, one of these other fellas. Yeah, just oh. around her. Kids, eh? You got too much money these days. Can just break a board and go buy another one. Oh, this one's missing a wheel. What happened to the wheel on that one? Need those fellas to it. The skateboards don't even work. One day at a time, folks. One day at a time. Wow, Christchurch really has come a long way since the earthquakes. I love walking around the city. With all this artwork everywhere, all the graffiti. It's pretty awesome that they've actually just let it flow. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Buffalo where it's cold in summer. All we know is hustling. Lower numbers than the Choa brothers. Actually reminds me of East Hastings Street in Vancouver. That East Hastings Street's got some bad motherfuckers hanging around. People around here seem pretty nice. Hi. Good day, Mike. Hi, Cheers. Fuck going to sleep, I'm four days deep. Popping bottles and I'm always causing trouble. Been here before. And there's plenty more to come. Road dad, I was born in the rock. Got babes, got snacks, yeah, call me Tony Stark. Then drink steep. About to fuck a sheep, too busy rocking, no time to sleep. The boys living the dream in Christchurch. I just ran into my mate. I'll just call him Rye Dog. Those of you who know Rye Dog will know who Rye Dog is. It's <laughs> anyone named for that. But he goes, and he's, he's just telling me about these crazy missions he does in the mountains. Doesn't take a gun, just takes a whole bunch of piss and a whole bunch of food and goes next level survival shit just basic food hamburgers and crap like that and does these massive missions under the hills and he's telling me his mate stretch uh sketch sketch sorry it's, uh, <laughs> it's his it's his gig he didn't tell me where it was but i'm gonna try to get the information out of it because there's heaps of pig sign up there and heaps of deer sign so yeah watch the space he might even come on a mission he's not a hunter though yet yeah, yeah i'm gonna bring him out of the coast and uh and take him hunting and then yeah it'll be a life changer because he carries all the piss and he can carry all the meat out. He could trade <laughs> off. Yeah. This is him here anyway. So this is this is like walking past the leper colonies back in the early biblical times. They've got this fence here, this and no, those hotel. are the COVID victims in there. This is a plague hotel. There's actually not that much separating us. There's like two and a half meters. They're all out recreating. They put this film up here so we can't actually look at them like people in the zoo. Plague rats. But they've all got masks on, which is good. But that's crazy, if one of them sneezed and it was a windy day, we'd all get the bloody COVID. Look, there they are walking around. Getting there, that's gonna be me in two bloody weeks. I'm gonna be on the other side of the fence, feeling uh, trapped in a cage. Remember that posh place I was telling you fellas about? Well, turns out we, we're here for a drink and something to eat. Chicken salad, they had a fire in the kitchen, so they've got the chicken salad and the spicy nuts. For hearts, flash as in here. They've even got a parlour. I don't know if these fellas want uh, want to be on film, so I'm just videoing from their heads down. That way you can just imagine what they look like, their beautiful faces. There we go. I actually got Holly's and Scott's head in there, sorry. <laughs> that's Holly and that's Scott. Uh, I wasn't going to bring my camera out tonight because I feel like a 
Jack putting it in people's faces, but might as well smash a bit of work out while I'm recreating, eh? Uh, it's a few hours later and we're, we're well into it now. Uh, we're just talking about gangster rap, actually. R my old mate Rye Dog, he, he likes his music. And Scott likes his music too. And I think Holly does as well. But anyway, then we're into the drum and bass shit. And I was just saying I'm going to bring out an album. But uh, Dub, Benny the Butcher, I was... Dub, Dub 7 Garage, mate. What's that? Yeah, a bit of Dub 7 Garage and bass music, mate. Like... Dub step Garage and bass music. I used to live with Rye Dog uh, 20 years ago in Methven. His, dog, his, his little dog Ollie would come home, Jack Russell would lick our feet after we'd been up the mountain skiing and snowboarding. Rye Dog was a snowboarder, I was a skier. Uh, fuck knows why I started skiing. Oh, because they didn't have snowboarding when I started skiing, that's why. But anyway, Benny the Butcher, Scott's hooked us up with some mean ass gangster beats. Benny the Butcher and the album is, what's the album bro? The Plugs I Met. The what? The Plugs I Met. The Plugs I Met. And uh, you fellas know I like a bit of gangster. I was just telling him about uh, Night Lavelle off that last video I did. Night Lavelle and uh, Pop Smoke. A couple of good tracks. They're not all good, but I'm really looking forward to listening to the plugs I met from uh, the Benny the Butcher. This is my mate Keanu. I just met him before. We're going to go to another bar down the road called The Glass or uh, Kong. Was it The Glass? Glass House. The Glass House or Kong, yeah. This is a mean ass bar. If you haven't been in here, what's the name of this place? OGB. OGB, it's right in the square in Christchurch. Uh, if you haven't been in here yet, come on in. They've got banging music. The tunes have been really good all night, good old school tunes. And uh, it's even got a parlour next door, which wasn't open tonight, but I'll come back in here when the parlour's open. Actually, I've been here before. And it was thumping. It was absolutely thumping in here. There was heaps of people everywhere. Scott is <laughs> chopped. <laughs> Scott's having a good night. Practice it every two days. Far out, I'm. Oh, Jesus. Bloody line skitters. Hard to drive one handed. I'm so tempted to drive the truck home, but. I'm probably just over the limit. I was paranoid someone's going to bloody steal it or we'll break into it and steal all my shit, but it should be right. It's 3 o'clock in the morning, a couple of hours till sunrise. I'll just come back and get it then. I've got to go pick the ute up from Miles Toto and see if the uh, flow test come out alright for the injectors and the brake issue. Pretty good service there. And then uh, take it and get some roof racks today, some rhino racks put on it. Pretty, uh, pretty budget hotel in this one. Zappy, zappy little car for around town. I think it's a Corolla. It's, uh, it's very peppy. Got lots of pep. Ah, she got some nice lines too. My attire for downtown, Jandals and the Swan Dry. And, uh, Kong on Oxford Terrace wouldn't let me in. They said, dress code, mate. You've got Jandals and the Swan Dry on. Sorry, but you can't come into our pub. Unbelievable. I even dressed up. I put my jandals on and my swan dry. They still wouldn't let me in. Anyway, to Miles Tater. Oh, there she blows. Still a bit ticky. Tick, 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 tick. I don't know. Is that standard? It's 2012 highlights with 167,000 kilometers on it. Any high lux, high lux specialists out there? Can anyone advise me? It's not as ticky as it was, but it's still, there's still a bit of tappet noise or injector noise coming. They said the injectors were fine. They said they did a flow test. Uh, I might see if I can get a printout of that flow test just to double check that they are all up to spec. Not 100% happy with that, but maybe that's just a high lux thing. Also, I might be going to China in a couple of weeks. I'm off to get COVID. Yes, get it out of the way. Over and done with. Hopefully not, but I'll let you know. I should find out this week if I'm going to China or not. I will be going for two months. I will have to isolate for two weeks going into China, then three weeks work, and then isolate for two weeks coming back into New Zealand. So feel a bit guilty. They just rang me up and said, oh, we can squeeze you in today after all. I gave him a bit of stick for booking me in and then not having room. But good on Scott, yeah, must be the owner, rang me straight back and said, bring it on in, mate, and we'll get it done. 
Sam Harrison. Um, Two handshakes in one day. Jesus, not much room in this bloody. <laughs> I made, uh, Do you want to, um, when you're dropping you, that off? You made some more room. Yeah. I just dropped it off. I just did drop it off. When you dropped it down there. What? Did you go and see them? Oh, is that the other people I need to see? That's the Harmon Bros. Oh, Harmon Bros racing are gonna um, chip and tune my Hilux. Are they there? That's them there, yeah. Well, let's go see them right now. They're not there. Oh, they're not there. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go see them. Let's drive around town with uh, this Didn't you say surfboard you on my head. I sent him a few texts, I'm oh, just yeah. waiting to get back. Why don't you get a new truck with more room in it? Sam's getting some new guns. They're gonna be as big as my guns? Uh, what kind of guns are you getting? 308. Yep. And a 6.5 PRC. Oh, a PRC. A, a 6.5. They're real flat shooting, aren't they? The best. The best. Apparently. Uh, what flavour? What what brand? Um, Christensen Arms. Christensen Arms. <laughs> There's a cop. <laughs> <laughs> He's fully checking me out. <laughs> the policeman's looking at me under my surfboard. I'm just trying to inch my belt down because I don't actually put it on properly. I'm just holding on to it. He fully checked us out. He's like, what? What's going on there? It's all right, mate. We're just going surfing. <laughs> don't crash. I'll waste myself on this hand. I'll it. Christians in arms. Yep. Yeah. A carbon barrel. Carbon barrel. Carbon barrel. Won't it just explode after a thousand shots? Or is it just uh, carbon? Is it full carbon? No, it's stainless with carbon wrap. So you oh, get right. Like a, um, so you can make it skinnier. You get like a match grade, like a, uh, like a target barrel. Yep. But it's like lighter than a normal... Ah, because the carbon still got stainless, but the carbon adds strength. Makes it real rigid and strength. Oh, there you go. It'll probably make it more accurate too, because it's more rigid, right? Yeah, they're supposed to be awesome. No barrel flex. Hi. All right, just dropped the Edo off to get the roof racks. Sam's making me an eat on bread, and uh, this is the UV resin treatment house. Oh, good, eh? Good, eh? Yeah. Mona is the coolest cat I've ever met in my life. Sam made this real awesome sculpture of me and then he decided it was too ugly to put on public display so he's covered it up with a sheet and sculpted me covered up with a sheet. Still pretty awesome. If, um, yeah, if anyone's keen to buy this sculpture of me covered up with a sheet, it's, what does it go for? About 30 grand? Yeah, about that. About 30, 32 and a half thousand dollars. <laughs> no. Or is it more expensive? No, it's actually about that. It's about that. Yeah, that's a good guess. About 32 grand for this sculpture. It's an original Samuel Harrison slash Josh James. It's like a matchup, mashup. In fact, Sam's mashing up another one right now. There's three of them. What? There's three of them. Three mashups. An addition of three. Whoa! So you get three for thirty-two grand. <laughs> yeah. No. Oh. Oh no! Yeah. What? Three for ninety? Yeah. Oh. Still a good deal. <laughs> if you type in the code Josh James. You ain't good at this gun, sorry. You want to be charged more. This one's pretty sweet. How much? Uh, how much for this one, Sam? Um, myself about ten. Ten grand. Yeah, for nine, nine and a half. What the hell? He wants to sell it to me for nine and a half grand. Ooh. Ooh, oh shit. Whoa. I think you made it better. Can I get a discount now? Look at that. It's like a second. That's that's the work I should have made. That's awesome. Now he's going to charge <laughs> me another two grand. I wonder if I can break the rest off. Because that would have been the first layer I put in. Look how much cooler that is. Wow, that is real cool. <laughs> can I actually have it now that it's buggered? Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. Don't, don't make it even better. I'm trying to <laughs> try and see if... Now hold it, because that looks good. You gotta like that. I think that on the smooth stuff looks real good. That looks really nice, though. Mate, I just gave Sam a really good idea. Then you gotta pay for it. I just it. just put the price up another five grand now. <laughs> That's cool. I was hoping to um, 
I actually Gets just improved his, improved his work of art. <laughs> Sam's going to claim insurance on it and sell it to me for five grand. And he's going to make 20 grand. Bloody hell. Why am I cleaning this up? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go get the brush and shovel. Clean up my very expensive mistake. When will these expensive mistakes end? I don't know. <laughs> when? And Sam's just polishing the knife edge. You can buy those machines that you put your knife in and it gets them razor sharp. And the reason they're so effective is because it's sharpening it on the same angle and you're not getting a rounded edge. You're getting a real nice flat straight edge. The, the uh, Mora knives actually, I forgot what the sharpen's called. It's called a Norwegian sharpen. When you sharpen the Mora knives, you sharpen the whole blade, not just the tip of it. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember what that's called, but Sam's essentially doing the same thing by keeping the knife in the same angle and just polishing it. Starts off with a rough stone, uh, with 400, then you move on to 1,000, then a 3,000, 8,000. You can go on to a 12,000 if you want to get really pedantic about it. But essentially, you've just got to hold the knife at that same angle, whether it be 25 or 20 or whatever angle you choose, and then the other side. And it takes a bit of practice to do that, to not tip it, but the more you practice and the better you get, the sharper your knives will get. And if you have a microscope on hand, have a look at the blade under the microscope and you'll see all the little serrations I just told you about. So you start off with rough serrations, like a serrated bread knife, and then you're just slowly polishing those serrations back. I don't know if you can see that burr, but... Yeah, you kind of can, yeah, yeah. Okay. And what Sam's doing now is he's stropping it, and what that does, it polishes the edge even more, and it puts a microscopic rounded edge on the knife, which helps it stay sharper for longer. It doesn't really make sense if you think about it. You think a rounded edge would actually make it blunter, but it's so microscopic, the rounded edge, it puts what's called a chrome finish on it, so it's very shiny. And then it, because the edge is round, not flat, it stays sharper for longer. A lot of people steal their knives. What the steel will do, it will leave a real fine straight bit on the edge, and then that straight bit will snap off. So it will seem like it's razor sharp, but then the edge will snap and you have to re-steal it again. So steels do work for a quick tickle up in the field, but if you want your knife to be truly razor sharp, you want to stone it and then strop it. And I really encourage people to do this. Don't get those automatic knife sharp machines. Learn how to stone a knife because it's, it's an awesome skill to have and it's real satisfying and you can shave the hairs off your arm. So we trick is not to do your arms because then you end up looking like a crackle. Go on, show us your arm. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. Bing, 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 bing. Yeah. I was going to put that cast head on my deck, but he's, I dropped it and then he said I can't have it because it's way better than it was. I'm going to come back and steal it actually, watch this space. I'm going to break into Sam's and I'm going to steal that head. Yeah, nah, I'm going to walk. It's only a couple of K. It's good for me, walking. I'm spending too much time on a couch editing videos lately. Not enough time out there doing it. No cruising. Bloody party poopers. There you go, this is a juniper bush here. Where are some berries? That's juniper, it'll quite often grow as an ornamental shrub. Oh look, here's heaps more here. Berries aren't ripe yet, they'll be ripe at the end of summer, but uh, just uh, a bit of information from that last video from the last vlog from Dan Shedd where he made the gin and flavoured it with juniper berries. Juniper also is really good for, for venison, for wild game flavouring. You fellas want some good hard wearing pants, get some cactus pants. That's pretty mean, should be able to put a heap of stuff up there dry bags and whatnot and just make family holidays that much easier. That looks awesome. Oh. <laughs> she, a YouTuber that doesn't like to be in front of the camera. I just she said she put us on her YouTube channel so I'm gonna put her on ours. Um, around the bend, check them out. Check them out. <laughs> Definitely twist it around the bend. It's a bendy corner that one. Yeah. There we go. That was a good trade-off wasn't it? Should be going for a BMX ride with my son, but my other sons have buckled both of the BMX wheels.
It's a bit of a ritual of mine and Sonny's. We come down here once a week, don't we, mate, and get an ice cream? Hey, the boys are down mullet fishing, so I'm coming down to check it out. They haven't caught any yet, though. No mullet. They saw a whole bunch here before, but they've swum off somewhere else. Too windy. Too bloody windy. We need some kind of accelerant paper or something. Might have something in the truck. If only we had some mullet to cook on the fire. Charlie and Dom want to stay down here all night and keep fishing, but there's no catching going on, so I think we're going to boost. Let's roll home. Yeah. Big game fishing today. We don't have any electric reels. We've only got big game rods and lures. That's all we're going to target. We're going to have a couple of drops of some swords. We're going to troll around, see if we can get a blue for tuna. I'll uh, probably pick up a few albacore along, along the way and who knows, who knows what's going to happen. Forecast is a bit marginal, but we thought bugger, we'll give her a nudge anyway. So, we've been standing for about 40 minutes, we've got another, oh Jesus, hour and 40 to go. 10 knots because it's a little bit choppy, so. Mm, squid flavoured watermelon. Half an hour into it. Oh, we're about three hours into it now. We did heaps of trolling, no tuna, no albacore. We just had our first drop for a swordfish. No swordfish. We're dropping in a different spot now, close to the Blue Nose Hill. And some other fellas in the blue boat over there. They're in a random spot. I don't know what they're fishing for. They must be fishing for hard pocket off the side of ledge, but I think we're actually going to go over there and drop over there next. Which we were going to do before they turned up anyway. It's always awkward when someone goes straight to where you're going to drop because I feel guilty bowling up there and saying I was actually just going to drop here because they think that you're poaching their fishing spot. It's happened a couple of times out here actually. People have got really annoyed when I've pulled up and started fishing. Get your own spot. Well actually you're on my spot mate. Oh beauty bro. Fish on! Little fish. It stopped screaming already, that was pretty short lived. Oh. 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 Drop them. Oh, you good size. Oh, straight in the chili bin. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Well, we found the fish. It's not our blue fin, but it's a good start. Just had a triple, triple strike. I dropped mine. Jack hand winched his in. Now he's getting the other one. You big tuna. Calm down. The Alfano, little black magic fruit salad doing the business. Two tuna for the little black magic and one for the little greeny. And one on one of the big lures, one of the black magic big lures hooked one up too. Ah. <clears throat> Number five in the bag. We actually come out here to catch a bluefin or a swordfish and we've had a couple of sword drops and then we saw the tuna boats work and we went, oh, let's go and catch some tuna. And we just yelled at one of the fellas, any bluefin? And he went, yep. Yeah. So the bluefin are out here. We just have to battle our way through a few albacore we'll trying to get them. Giving some of these new KM lures a bash. The hook's outrageously large because that's all that I had, but we 
pop one of those out the back, see if anything takes it. I have to say, it's a very, very sharp looking lure. That one, cam lures. Quadruple hookup. Bloody hell, no bluefin. It's about two o'clock in the afternoon. I think we're just gonna go home. Call it quits all ahead. Whole chili bin full of albacore. an excellent day on the water and reasonably short day got up at 3 30 and it is now quarter past two almost 11 hours seems like about three or four actually time just flew by today and we're going to get out of here before it chops up home james holy shit this thing goes fast Bloody hell, it's real fast. Jump, jump, jump! Oh, Yeah, wash out. 